Cozy games are taking over the Nintendo Switch. Even Pokemon has become cozy. And quite frankly, there have been too many cozy games for me to cover on this channel. So instead of doing them each one by one, today we are ranking every single cozy game I've played in the last month and a half. I want to preface this whole video by first saying none of these games are bad. Just some of these games are better than others. And as always, this is just my opinion. If you've enjoyed the games which I've mentioned lower down on this list, then I'm glad your money was well spent. In total, in the last month, month and a half, I have played 12 cozy games. Some of which you've seen on this channel and I've done reviews of, and some of which you have never heard me speak of. Anyways, let's get on with the list. We're going to start from worst and go all the way to the best last. So starting off in 12th position, the worst game I've played in the last month or so, and that's unfortunately Bunny Park. As I said earlier, this is by no means a bad game. I think this is just a badly priced game. This game cost me just shy of £17. And whilst adorable, it was incredibly slow, especially with the Switch controls. Bunny Park sees you own a bunny park and all you need to do is take care of the bunnies by feeding them and also making the park look cute and aesthetic. By doing this, you increase your park rating and this also in turn brings newer bunnies to your park. I'd say this game is borderline an idle game with some decorating as well. And whilst I'm a huge fan of idle games, this didn't quite hit the spot with me. You basically spend your time grinding for money, money which you can then spend on all of your decorations. And to get the money, you need to collect the loose change which is lying around from your bunnies being happy and also cleaning up the weeds and the dirt that appears on your farm. And as you progress, things like feeding your bunnies and cleaning up the park can be automated, meaning that the later game, you can just focus on decorating. My main issue with this game is just the controls. The cursor moved so incredibly slowly that things like cleaning up your park and picking up weeds became such a chore. The controls weren't that intuitive and I found frustrating at times. And the cash wouldn't always register even when you ran your cursor over it numerous times. Overall, whilst this game is adorable, very cute, and a nice idle game to have on the Switch, it just really wasn't worth that much money. I think the £5 mark would have been much better. And in 11th place, I know some of you are going to be sad about this, it's Hoko Life. If you don't know anything about this game, it's a life sim kind of similar to Animal Crossing. The story sees you fall asleep on a train and wind up in this town. And then somehow you decide instead of going home to your family, you will start a new life in this town you've ended up in. It sounds like the start of a horror film, honestly. Much like Animal Crossing, you can fish, you can catch bugs, you make improvements to the town, and you make friends with the villagers and you can craft. There's also this feature that allows you to make furniture, which is really its selling point, putting it aside to Animal Crossing, which I genuinely think is a really cool addition. So let's get on to why I've put it in 11th place. First of all, the villagers are too humanoid. They are actually low-key terrifying. Like, look at him. Truly look at him. And also, why does this giraffe have no neck? It makes no sense. Visuals aside, I also had a few other problems with this game. I think the biggest issue I faced was just the pacing. I played Hoko Life for four hours on stream, and by the time I ended my stream, we were still in the tutorial. I found myself going to bed at 1pm, 2pm every single game day because there was nothing else for me to do that day. The grind to get money was also unbalanced. The bugs I caught were worth 5 coins maximum and I found saving up for items to buy for my house was incredibly tedious. For the story quality we've got so far and the graphics, I do genuinely think this game is slightly overpriced. So that's why I've put it as 11th. Next is Spirit and the Mouse, a game I briefly talked about in the cozy games coming in this month. It's 10th place because I absolutely loved running around this French little town. You play as Leela the Mouse, who accidentally knocks into Lumion the Spirit Guardian and ends up absorbing electrifying powers. Your job is to guide Leela through the small little French town and restore balance back to the village. And to do this, you need to problem solve with your newly found powers. 
This puzzle solving can stretch from solving riddles or things like trying to find a route up to the rooftops to fix something that's broken. I know I likened it to Stray earlier, but this game is a lot more narrative driven than Stray was. Although one thing I did love is there is no way to harm the mouse. That's one thing people struggled with a little bit in Stray was playing as a cute cat and then realizing if you did something wrong, you actually hurt the cat. This game is more focused on puzzle solving than it is action sequences and is a lot slower paced than Stray. I did put it as number 10 as this game has quite a lot of puzzles in it and not all of them were that much fun to solve. I enjoyed the puzzles that involved you trying to find a route to get to the rooftops, but one of the puzzles I really didn't enjoy was you just running around the town trying to find the price of a coffee. I feel like that's more of a fetch quest than a puzzle, and I don't really find that interests me. I did have a lot of fun with the game though, there's just been a lot of very good releases in the last month or so. In ninth place, we have Lemon Cake. In this absolutely adorable game, you take over a dilapidated bakery and over time you restore it into its former glory. And in the back of your bakery is a cute little garden. As you progress, you unlock more ingredients for your little farm area and therefore unlock more recipes and bring in more customers. The one thing I love about this game that is unlike every single food game I've played before it is that I didn't find it stressful at all. There are no negative repercussions for sucking at this game. If you mess up an order or mess up many orders in the same day, all that happens is you make slightly less money and that is it. That is the energy I need in more cooking games, please. Oh, and did I mention that there's an upgrade to turn your bakery into a cat cafe? Incredible, more games need cat cafes. The reason I put it at number nine and not higher is for two reasons. One, the game is quite short. As you finish each day in the bakery, you are able to purchase upgrades. And unfortunately, the time in which it takes you to purchase every single upgrade for the game isn't really that long. And two, it's quite expensive considering how short the game is. When Lemon Cake goes on sale though, it is an absolute must buy for cozy gamers. I had so much fun playing it. And although it has farming elements, it's not a farming sim. Then at number eight, we have Bear and Breakfast. In this game, you play as a bear who opens up a bed and breakfast. And after finishing up your first abandoned shack, you decide that you don't want to stop at just the one bed and breakfast and turn it into an entire franchise. You're in charge of absolutely everything, including building and personalizing each of the rooms and also in charge of bringing new customers in. One thing I love about this game is every new building you open progresses your abilities a little bit. So for example, the second place you open up, you have bathrooms to contend with, then you unlock things like function rooms and kitchens, and I love the slow progression of the game. And although it is a management style game, it does not feel stressful in the slightest. There's also a story underpinning the whole thing, which I really enjoyed, and I absolutely adore the character and the art style of this whole game. I think the reason I put it here and not higher is although it is an absolutely incredible game that I have had many hours of enjoyment from, it's hard to recommend on the Nintendo Switch over the PC. The controls on the Switch are definitely not the best, and they are far, far better on the PC version of this game. Number seven, and this is going to shock many of you, is Disney Dreamlight Valley. I know what you're thinking, and yes, I have played well over 60 hours of this game, but I feel like given how many times it crashes, and how many bugs there are, I cannot put this any higher. There are so many things I love about the game. I love the Disney characters. I love all the different realms you can go to. I love how the quests, for the most part, aren't that boring. And Scrooge's Shop is the reason why I load up this game every single day, as some of the items are so good. The gameplay mechanics are so, so much fun and the potential is limitless. If they run out of Disney films, they have Pixar. And if they run out of Disney and Pixar, they have Marvel and also Star Wars they can bring into it. There are many years worth of gameplay to have from this game. My issue is both the bugs and the amount of time the developers are taking to patch them, especially on the Nintendo Switch. I was incredibly hopeful when one week after launch, we already had our first set of patches for the game that came out on both PC and every single console. However, since then, despite game breaking glitches still happening, we have had not a single patch. 
and instead they're waiting for the full update to give us all of these patch fixes. Some people still can't access their items they paid real life money for. A lot of people are stuck on various quests that won't be completed because of a glitch. And everyone is still reporting crashing on the Switch. And considering every single person who is playing the game right now spent real money on it, we shouldn't be waiting for the next update to receive patches to game breaking glitches. If the game ran better, this would have easily been number one, but until they fix the game, it never will be. In sixth place, we have Doff Romantic. Sometimes you just want a game where you don't need your entire brain to concentrate on. A game where you can sit in front of the TV, put on a movie or a show, and also sit down with your Switch. This is the perfect game for that, and is one of the most chill games I've ever played. Doff Romantic sees you place tiles to create an ever-growing landscape. You start with a random stack of tiles and one after the other you draw them and place them down. The idea is you try and match the edges as best you can to create beautiful landscapes. This includes things like villages, lakes and also forests. If you want to make this game somewhat competitive there's also a little scoring feature so you can try and beat your previous high score. And this has high replay value as every season is different and you can unlock new tiles and biomes. This is a true relaxing game and I adore how unique it is and also how good the soundtrack is. This game plays really nicely on the Switch as well. The controls are very well thought out and I don't feel limited at all by playing on a controller. The game itself also runs super smoothly. The only time you drop frames is when you load up a brand new game and that's about it. If you're into puzzle games, this is an absolute must buy and you will not be disappointed. And number five, we have Let's Build a Zoo. I was so excited for this to come to the Nintendo Switch and it did not disappoint. I quickly want to mention there are a few bugs that people are reporting. However, I think a patch has already come out to try and address these. So they are on it. This is not your typical zoo management game. It's a more laid back approach, like yes, you can micromanage everything, but unlike Planet Zoo, you're not going to have things like your bearers escaping and trying to eat visitors, you know? It has a couple of unique features which I absolutely love that I haven't seen in any other zoo game. The first one is moral choices. <laughs> It'll give you decisions like painting a dog to look like a lion so you can get new visitors to your zoo and different things like that. And with every moral choice you make, you also get moral points that you can use to spend on good things like wind turbines and recycling centers or bad things like turning your animals into bacon. I love it. If you like making your zoo look pretty, there are plenty of options to do that. And despite it being a zoo management game, I found myself rarely overwhelmed or stressed by the gameplay, which I love. I also love the focus on breeding. You can kind of breed different species together to unlock new species. And once you've unlocked every single species, you can take two completely different animals and merge them together. My capybara snake is one of the most cursed things I've ever seen. This game definitely deserves to be number five. I have had so much fun playing it. It is such a hard game to put down and it's definitely cost me many sleepless nights. And they did a great job making the controls work on Switch. I just wish that they let us use the D-pad more because it can be a little bit tricky when you decorate. But overall, fantastic game and great value for money. There are many, many hours to be had playing this. Number four is Wildflowers. Now, the one thing I want to preface this game with that wasn't said in the trailer and I think should be more well known, the tones of this game surround you taking care of your sick and elderly grandmother. So if you're someone dealing with something like that in real life or who has recently experienced loss, I will say give this game a miss. I currently have a sick relative in hospital, so I found the themes somewhat difficult to deal with. But if you're in the headspace for it, this is a absolutely incredible farming sim. I will be 100% honest when I say I was delaying buying this game because I was put off by the graphics. But within 10 minutes of playing it, I already didn't care. This is a farming sim unlike any other because you are actually a witch. Wildflower sees you play as Tara, who has just moved to this cute island to help out her grandma and run the family farm. By day, you tend for the crops, care for animals, fish, craft, and do all your farming sim stuff. But at night, you practice as a witch. You learn how to fly your broomstick, brew potions, 
and even control the weather and transform into a cat. Considering the price of this game, which is just under £20, I did not expect it to be fully voice acted and voice acted really well. On top of that, there's barely any loading screens. I've become so accustomed to walking into a house and having a loading screen. So when I didn't have one in this game, it actually really creeped me out and took me a few seconds to realize why. This is a very smooth running game. They did a great job with the port. The day length is also perfect, meaning that time just flies by when I'm playing this. So if you're looking for a farming sim that isn't all about farming and has a really good story underpinning the whole thing that even involves cults, you will have a great time. Just don't judge it by its initial graphics. In third place, we have Potions Permit. I can hear you all gasping right now. So I decided to put it third and not closer to the top for one reason, and that is the bugs. Now, in my initial review, I had played the game for just over 10 hours, and although I came across some bugs, none of them were game-breaking. However, since playing it longer, I found out that there are some more game-breaking bugs as you get further through the game, and although there is a patch coming, it is yet to come on the Switch, so I'm putting it a third. But I truly mean it when I say, this is one of my favorite games of 2022. And apparently, not being a farming sim but being cozy is a big way to stand out from the crowd right now. I also want to point out this game is less than £17. You get all of this, the storytelling, the mini games, the beautiful way in which this whole town and every character is set up for less than most of the games on this list. The game sees you being sent to Moonbury, where you're brought to the town to tend to the mayor's ill daughter. Due to your skills as a chemist, you manage to successfully cure her and the mayor asks you to stay on in the village to help the residents of Moonbury. Although it's not long before you realize that none of them trust you whatsoever. As the story unfolds, you realize that the previous chemists who were at the town absolutely decimated the local wildlife and the local area. And it's up to you to not only tend to the ill people of the town, but also fix the mistakes of the previous chemists. I did a full review on why I absolutely adore this game, Curing the villagers is so much fun, it's filled with mini games. You get different mini games when you diagnose them with illnesses. And then when you go to brew the potions, you end up with this kind of Tetris like mini game. And you have to go foraging for different ingredients, which have different Tetris shapes, which should hopefully help you fill in the shape and brew the potion. But the thing that made me truly fall in love with this game wasn't any of the mini games, it was the characters. Every single time you level up your friendship with a character, you are greeted with a cutscene, and each character's story is beautifully written and so diverse. I found myself each day trying to find a different person to level up their friendship as I wanted to know more about their story. And it honestly made the romancing really difficult because I didn't know who to pick. Overall, this game is truly unique and is like nothing I've played before. The only downside to this entire game is the fact that it's currently got a few bugs on it, but I really hope all of those are going to disappear with the next patch. And it truly is one of my favorite games I've played at least this year and in the top 10 of ever on the Nintendo Switch. I love it that much. Right, things are getting serious. We have but two games left on my list. My second favorite game I have played in the last month and a bit is Ooblets. I have an entire video on why I adore this game, but one thing I quickly want to say is they've made it even better. Ooblets is an absolutely adorable take on a farming sim. You move to the island and end up helping the mayor restore the internet. But in doing so, you must catch and raise Ooblets in order to dance battle with them. There are so many different types of ooblets that are absolutely adorable, but on top of that, you can find common colored ooblets, uncommon colored ooblets, and also gleamy ooblets, which are the shinies of the ooblet world. This game is jam packed with character. And not only have they fixed the big bug that was on the Nintendo Switch version, allowing you to open up your shop, they also recently announced that there are now events. So if you were to open the game right now, you would find that the game now has Halloween items. And not only can you buy decorations, Halloween outfits for yourself to wear, you can also buy Halloween items for your ooblets to wear. 
And honestly, that fact alone just upped it like two places on the rankings because it is so adorable. The great thing about events is no matter how far you get through the game, you will always be picking it up to see what the event has in store. And I cannot wait to see what they do for Christmas. This is a game which so many in the community have been loving and adoring so far. And I struggle to put it down too. And although you do farm, it really doesn't feel like a farming sim whatsoever. So here we go, the one you have been waiting all video for, and you'll be shocked to know. I have never spoken about this game on the channel before. I don't think I even mentioned it in an upcoming games list. So this is coming out of nowhere, and it is Beacon Pines. This is unlike any of the games I have mentioned on this list so far. Beacon Pines is a cute and creepy adventure set within a mysterious book. And you not only play as the main character, Luca, you also play as the reader of the book. The narrator itself is fully voice acted, although the dialogue between characters isn't. The story is set around something strange happening in the old warehouse where Luca and his friends live. And they decide it's up to them to try and uncover the hidden truths and try and change the course of fate. Throughout the story, you unlock things called charms. And on them, they have just one single word. Sometimes the narrator will get to parts of the books where the word is empty. And it's up to you to use these charms to fill in the blank. At these vital moments, you will pick which branch of the story you go along with. And to put it bluntly, many of these branches will end in disaster. But by carrying out these branches, you unlock new charms and you can go back into the story and try them at different points to see if you'll meet a different fate. The thing I love about this so, so much is the story is so unpredictable, yet so gripping all at the same time. I struggle so much to put this game down once I start playing it. The animation style is beautiful. The way the game's narrated is wonderful. And I love the fact that at certain points, instead of showing you what's happening, they know it's far more powerful to leave the screen completely blank and they just describe to you in painstaking detail the events which have just happened. And it's your job to try and find the correct branch of the story. And although this is maybe a little darker than the other games on this list, it has been my go-to to play every night before I go to sleep. It is one of the most unique experiences I've had on the Switch and is literally an emotional roller coaster. But the way it narrates the story made me fall in love with the characters and the game instantly. If you're a murder mystery lover, this game is a must and hands down one of the best games you can buy on the Switch right now, especially for the price. That's every game I played in the last month or so completely ranked. Let me know what your number one game is in the comments down below. And if you want to see why Ooblets is so high up on my list, click here. I'll see you next time. Bye.